What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of FMA Source. Welcome to the Dumpster Fire Podcast. Today, not so much of a podcast. I want to break down one of my favorite techniques, one of my favorite sequences to pull off in full contact stick matches. It is the hanging guard bait to thrust. I'm going to show you guys a whole bunch of times what this looks like, how to set it up. We're going to talk about contingencies. We're going to talk about failure points. And we're going to talk about what makes this technique awesome. But uh, here, here's what it looks like. That's the hanging guard. Um, I want to give a quick shout out to Mandala Jason Jones from Red Desert Dogs Kali. And he's also a Mandala in the Pikiti Tertia Tactical Association. We actually went out for drinks um, at a Filipino bar, and then he showed me this outside, and I thought immediately. He only showed me the hanging guard, and I believe he showed me uh, one one tactic to use it, but I've since taken this technique, this singular technique. I've made it my own, and I absolutely love it. So uh, first, let me show you what it looks like. I'm going to show you two instances where I've been able to pull it off in full contact matches. The first one was in a compartmentalized sparring match with my homeboy, James Lynn, at the boudoir. Here it is. Oh! All right, let's see that again. There it is. That was the hanging guard. Um, and here it is against uh, another good friend of mine, Justin Patricio Fernando, during his um, lateral grading in the PTTA. One more time. All right, we're going to see the first one again one more time. These are short clips, and then we're going to talk about it. Oh! All right, there it is. So what makes the hanging guard such an effective technique is that it's, it's very inviting. It's very annoying. So here I present the hanging guard right with that tip of that stick pointed right at your opponent it's going to elicit a response and that response is reliably and predictably to try to just swat it out of the way all right so play with the hanging guard within the framework of that sparring match and see how they react you'll know it's just really really difficult not to respond to a stick being pointed at your face there are a number of ways that you can retract it. Here, I'm going straight back and up. Uh, one of my favorite ways to actually pull it off is just rearing it straight back, like right there. So again, opponent swats at it. Now, when they swat at it, they're going to swat it from this plane. This plane or that plane, in however many iterations. And it doesn't matter which way they swat it from, if they make contact with your stick, they are going to be at a discrepancy, a time discrepancy, to return it with any sort of a defensive motion, especially if your attack is a straight line attack. So um, let me just move this thing out of the way here. So examining the sequence here, right? I present the hanging guard, he swats at it, I get it out of the way, right? doesn't make any contact the second time I just veer it straight back and then I launch it the thing you need to watch out for uh, the hanging guard is that it leaves you incredibly vulnerable it leaves your torso wide open so distance management needs to be at a premium even at this point if I missed this right if he sidestepped, if he parried, if he did anything else, I would be committed forward and I would be extremely vulnerable. So it's always important that after you execute that hanging guard, 
you have some sort of a immediate retreat. And this is where that Calis Illustrissimo footwork really helps out, that sort of retorata, lutang. Um, and if you miss, it's even worse. If you miss, it's even worse. So this is, you know, I'm not saying this technique is not without its flaws. It's it's just, it's worked beautifully for me in the past. So again, one of the things that makes this work is that it's incredibly inviting. It's incredibly annoying and it's going to elicit a predictable response for the most part, right? Um, or no response at all. It's It's also a very scary position to attack for these instances. All right, so another thing that we need to be mindful of, um, aside from after blows, so it would be good to have some, like for me, I don't know, I kind of, I like to look pretty and I'm not, you know, that great at this stuff, um, still learning, but my retreat is typically just get the F out of there. <clears throat> Even here, after my thrust, I did no such defensive motions with my stick. I could have. But I just step back. So you guys can definitely make this tactic way better than I've been able to. Right. Um, I'm still crafting it. I'm still developing, um, you know, options for it. So that is not to be too predictable. And again, I, I'm showing my tactics. Right. Like and 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 the reason for this is I want you to develop countermeasures for it and, <laughs> you know, show off a little bit. And then that way I get to develop counter counter tactics for it. At the end of the day, it's really, you know, it's 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 gonna it's gonna boil down to how we're feeling that day when we square up, right? So um, this tactic can be pulled off from false lead, but what again? Let's let's talk about what makes this technique effective. Is that your opponent's uh, perception of your true range is severely corrupted? He doesn't, or he may not. Let me be a little bit more diplomatic. He may not know exactly where you are in relation to how far he can get you back. So just look at my motion here. See this? I'm covering a lot of distance. My left foot is planted, right? And now with that stick hanging in front of your opponent's face, it gives him the impression, right, subconsciously, that you're closer than you really are. And so they think that this SWAT might be enough, but you're really way, even if I didn't move my stick, right? He, he couldn't have hit me even as he was lunging forward. Maybe if he aimed for my legs, he could have hit me. But aiming for my legs when I'm in this posture, uh, you should be thinking about me dropping that stick from 12 to six. And so that should be enough for you not to try any sort of a low line attack. And once again, the hanging guard is just so annoying. It's just so inviting. You want to swat that out of the way. So that's usually what your opponent is going to do. They're going to try to swat it out of the way. The danger here is that if your opponent attacks you with multiple strikes, right? So swatting it out of the way, moving forward and attempting to continue their motion. I'm going to show an example of that. Again, the first example that I showed um was from james lynn he I, I'm, I'm not sure if he got me here i think he got me you know what i think we should examine this we should examine this um this way let me just bring it up i appreciate your patience you guys uh it won't take long i promise <clears throat> here we are here we are okay so here's my homeboy, James Lynn. By the way, this was a compartmentalized sparring match. We had objectives. This wasn't my objective. He was actually peppering my arm. It's quite beaten up today. Um, Guru Joe gave us something to do within the context of a full contact match, and I was trying to pull those things off uh, with very little success. So this was sort of like, <laughs> I call it like my ego move, you know, when I'm getting my ass kicked, I'm like, I need to hit this guy back. So this is my go-to. Um for now, I mean, those things change. So here we go. Let's examine this. You know what? I'm going to make this full screen for you guys. Okay. And just so that we can see James's footwork, let me get rid of this banner. All right, here we go. So I present a hanging guard. He's going to swat at it. Again, this is such a reliable and 
very predictable response to the hanging guard. Whenever somebody puts a hanging guard, and this is not me being awesome. It's just you don't want a stick pointed at your face covering all of this distance that you need to close. That is a threat. That is a threat coming from an angle one position. That's a threat coming from an angle two position. That's a threat coming from a straight line thrust. That's a threat coming from 12 to 6. It is a threat. I don't care who you are. This is not a, a good position to be facing. Hanging guard, legit, legit tool to control uh, your opponent's momentary uh, emotional state. It's going, it's going to annoy them. Okay, That's what it's going to do. It's going to annoy them. So as he swats, I sort of create this piston motion, right? I mean, there I kind of drop it down a little bit, but typically I just want to rear it straight back, right? Just rear it straight back and then boom. <clears throat> um, it doesn't matter whether or not they hit the stick. Preferably, <clears throat> they don't hit the stick so that if their swat is overcommitted, it's really going to put them at a huge, huge time discrepancy to recover it's going to be very hard to block this attack unless they came into this initial attack with the intention of multiple strikes usually if you haven't faced this opponent before they're not going to execute multiple strikes to get rid of your hanging guard they're going to try to swat at it they're going to test the waters so to speak you guys all right so he's going to test the waters but i think james has seen this before so as i boom Right here, at this moment, I have the advantage. It's going to, I mean, he's going to swat that stick on a horizontal or a vertical plane. The likelihood of it catching my direct line with my intention from the beginning, me anticipating and waiting for him to swat at my stick, for the most part, he's going to be at a time discrepancy. And boom. Did he get, he got me there. He got me there. He got me there. And so remember earlier I was talking about the vulnerabilities of this tactic. It leaves your torso open. So you got to be careful for that. But listen, this would be completely unacceptable if this was, you know, some sort of a machete match. If this was a point fighting match, depending on the rules, neither of us may get the point because the time between my hit and his hit we're almost identical, but if they if they put value to specific targets, well, I'm going to win this match. I got him in the face. Uh, he got me in the ribs, you know, not to say that's OK. We try to aim for, you know, clean strikes. But there it is. You can additionally throw this. I've thrown it before from a false lead. Let me show you guys what the false lead is going to accomplish for you. One second. Not sure if you can hear me, but if you're in the false lead, which means your weapon hand and your rear foot, right? So your rear foot goes back and your weapon hand is forward like this. So that when you retract, you have not only your stretch, but an additional step to cover that distance. So here's what it looks like from the front. Non-false lead looks like this. False lead looks like this. Right? So my weapon hand is forward, but um, my right leg is back. So that when you rear, you have, boom, watch how far I can go. I'm beyond the lens right now. Right? So you can absolutely throw the, uh, the hanging guard bait into a thrust in a false lead position but that's going to do something that's going to put uh that's going to put your rear foot in a lot of danger all right let's look at uh let's let's look at these videos a few more times i want you guys to have a look about uh, the timing and the execution and the distance for these all right so here's So I didn't need all that space, you guys, right? Uh, my distance management could have been could have been better here. Could have been way, way better. I didn't need like look how far when I land this thrust. I'm I'm pretty deep in there. I really didn't need to get that deep. I just needed to 
touch him with my tip. And maybe had I done that, he wouldn't have smacked my ribs on his subsequent follow through. Right? So James had the intention also because of, um, you know, his metric for success given by Guru Joe Apostol. He was supposed to land combination strikes. So maybe, boom, there it is. He got me there. All right, let's look at the other example one more time. Now, in this example, mm, maybe I got lucky. Perhaps it was just circumstance. But let me make this full screen for you mofos. All right. Oh, why is it so big? Okay. We got to make that play bar way smaller. And we'll move it to the side here so that you guys can see this a little bit better. All righty. Hanging guard. Test. Back to hanging guard. There it is. So, right, that second SWAT was casual. That second SWAT was casual. This was pronounced, got out of the way. There it is. The second SWAT was casual. My range here was a little bit better. And then he was also moving back. So that lended itself to that shabam. No, that was pure luck that he didn't really hit me. That was pure luck. He could have. He could have. Boom. Maybe had he kept his arm a little bit higher as well, his, you know, that rising trajectory would have even caught up with me, maybe cut off my arm. There's a setup again. And attack. All right. All right, so guys, that's the hanging guard. Hope you guys enjoyed that deconstruction. A little bit of a change of pace here. Uh, so yeah, let me know if you have any questions about the, the, the hanging guard bait to thrust. Again, I'm not saying it's any sort of a magic pill or anything, but it's a really fun one to try. It's a really fun one to try because, man, I mean, if you land this, it really is a quite a crowd pleaser, right? Because you're making the dude miss and then you're simultaneously launching. So play with that. Play with it in true lead. Play with it in false lead. Remember the things that lend to its success is that their response to the stimuli is going to be very, very predictable. Nobody wants to have a stick pointed at their face, right? It's kind of insulting also. In some cultures, or like you're literally like pointing at their face like this. So the response is going to be predictable, which means that, you know, at least if you've never faced this person ever before, any degree of reliability and predictability that you can elicit from your opponent are opportunities to capitalize on really, really cool shit that you can do uh, in Filipino martial arts. So make sure you play around with that. Um, You'll see. And you're, you're watching specifically for the moment that they try to swat it. They are going to absolutely swat it. Things to look for. If they go low line, that's a vulnerability. You drop that stick straight down right on top of their head. Um, and that's, that's a fair exchange to me, right? Even under, you know, point fighting or, you know, reality. It's, it's a different conversation. But if he's going to, if he's going to, hack your leg in exchange for a drop down strike to his skull it's not a bad trade right it's not a bad trade um and then the only other vulnerability you need to be aware of is what happens after i like to pose and <laughs> that's a big problem of mine like uh and that's the thing that i've been working on is how to mitigate these after blows right right after blows and even here this wasn't even an after blow like he got me good like he got me in the tip there right so again there's a lot to work on as far as your timing your distance management your ability to corrupt your opponent's perception of your true range 
Um, and then mitigating uh, after blow risk by having some sort of a defensive retreat. You guys can figure that out. In fact, if you know of a good defensive retreat off of a successful thrust, let me know. And you guys can help me out with not being such a damn poser. Because I don't know, man. When I land these thrusts, when I, and I love thrusting. I think it's one of the more underutilized techniques in all of Filipino martial arts is just a thrust. Is just a simple thrust from a whole bunch of load positions. So, again, if you've got any tips and tricks, what your favorite uh, defensive retreats are, whether that's, you know, you you outside payong or an umbrella or maybe you step through and you crash i don't know let me know in the comments below what your favorite um after blow mitigation tactics are but listen i hope you guys enjoy this video i i really do i love doing these videos you know there's a lot of things that i suck at <laughs> i i suck at remembering things i suck at patterns um I get, I get bored quite easily, so I'm not a very good student as far as, you know, learning the system in its entirety, but I'm also pretty good at a few things. Um, I'm really, really good at trusting my brain. Uh, I've been able to pull off some really incredible things in full contact matches. Uh, I'm going to loop this for you guys so you guys can keep seeing this. I've been able to... Anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, I was saying I've been able to pull off some really incredible things in full contact matches all around the world with um, with things that I, I haven't even trained. you know. And I'm like, how the hell was I able to pull that off? Uh, and that's because I, I, I trust my brain, you know? Um, just like you know, as a self-defense condition. Um, the things that happen in a full contact stick fighting match, they're, um, they're unrepeatable, right? There are still high percentage chances. I was just talking about how when you point a stick at someone's face, they're going to swat it out. There's a 100% chance that they're going to want to do that. But how they do it um, is going to change. And that's the thing that I talk about when it's, it's unrepeatable. So even, even though you have these go-to techniques, you have your favorite techniques, it's not a guarantee that it's going to work. So it's just important to keep playing with it. But also, you're never going to you know train every eventuality. You're not going to be able to train for every variable and the exact sequence that it's going to happen. I've never had a sparring match that was identical to the last, right? So just like in a self-defense condition it's important to work your attributes of you know timing distance management speed power and training you know and in application as well control is really really important right continuum of force is really really uh important um but in in, in stick fighting you can afford to play around with it and a, a healthy dose of that is going to come from just realistic expectations of yourself Right. Whenever I post a sparring breakdown, there's always somebody who comments with, oh, there are too many mutual hits. Yeah, there are too many mutual hits because we're staying in the pocket. We're not running around like idiots for half the match trying to get, you know, the clean hit that may never come. Right. So we take these risks and we're aware we set our mentality uh, appropriately to understand, yeah, we're engaged in the sport iteration of something that can be life saving. And so you can have a healthy mindset and you can keep things as real as you want, but without subjecting yourself to some sort of, a, I guess, um, an, an egoless exchange of ideas really amounting to practice. Well, it's not really it's not going to prove anything. Right. Um, even this, even the hanging guard. Right. Is this proof that it works? I, <laughs> these are really, really difficult questions to 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 ask and 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 answer without nuance like does the jab work uh yeah the jab does work should you jab in a self-defense condition i don't know will that jab land what if there's ice on the ground see there are just way too many variables 
uh, the best we can do is to shed our ego for the time being and play, allow ourselves to get hit, right? I think a lot of the comments from people, um, you know, who say things like, ah, oh, too many mutual hits or you're not this and you're that enough. Those usually come from people who don't spar and play around with this stuff. So anyway, thank you guys very much for your support. Hey, if you haven't already done so, can you do me a favor? Go on YouTube. Check out FMA Source. If you aren't watching from YouTube, just make sure to hit that like button or that thumbs up. Really helps us out. We're at 2,000. We're at over 2,000 subscribers now, so I really can't thank you guys enough for that. That's a huge achievement. I have, you know, channels with a million subscribers, uh, but starting from scratch, really, and just doing it all for, for the love of the Filipino martial arts, 2,000 subscribers is a big deal to me. And so thank you very much for that. So uh, let me get to some comments. Adam Prado. Uh, this reminds me a lot of that mechanic demonstrated by Michael Jai White to Kimbo Slice about the telegraphing punch. I think I've seen that video. I think they were in a movie set. There were some trailers in the background. Um, so if you think about it, if you think about it, I am telegraphing, right? The hanging guard, you're, you're telegraphing. Um, but the variables, again, we're going to talk about variables of what comes after. It's really hard to predict. And even then, right, if you guys get an opportunity to spar with me, I'm going to try to pull this off against you for sure. So not only have I telegraphed in the moment, I made a video saying I'm going to try to do this against you guys. So if I pull it off, what did that say? about telegraphing. Telegraphing really isn't as big a deal as people uh, make it out to be, you know. Of course, the principle, the idea of being non-telegraphic is a good one, but if the rules are defined, the whole entire thing is telegraphed. I'm going to try to beat you up, you're going to try to beat me up, right? So we know what our intentions are. So, And you've seen these, you know, you've seen guys like Mark Hunt in the UFC right with one tool and he still gets the knockout so telegraphing i would say is less important than good timing and distance management but thank you for that adam i appreciate it hey man nice man uh what's up here um have you ever tried switching the feet up with the rear foot stepping through moving slightly yeah yeah i just talked about that didn't i um, that's called the false lead. And it's a great, great way to do it. You are 100% on the right track, the Warriors Code. If you were uh, in the false lead, you are further corrupting your opponent's perception of your range. Because that hanging guard, that stick is right in front of their face. Your rear leg is back. So once you get that out of the way, not only do you have the extension of your arm and your torso to gain distance, if he was moving back, you move that rear leg to the front and you get like an extra two feet of distance and you can really catch them off guard um, on the retreat. Great point, Warriors Code, fantastic. Um, JTR, does that stick have a blood groove? <laughs> I'm told it improves accuracy by 3.5x. Hey, listen, man, it does have a blood groove. You know, everything's got to have a blood groove, right? Because we're all super serious about <laughs> this stuff. I'm glad you can have a sense of humor about this stuff too, bro. Yeah, sometimes people take this stuff way, 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 way too seriously. And it's to their detriment, you know. Everyone's always trying to, oh, prove that works. Prove that doesn't work. The reality of it is, again... So many things happen, too many variables. I like to think that there are some objective truths in fighting, but those objective truths still come by way of principles and not what my favorite techniques are. Um, and, you know, I'm going to quote my friend Mick Coop here, even though sometimes he thinks that I can be a little bit too postmodernist about fighting, that everything works. But, you know, he makes a good point. Um, he says, uh, you don't bring your favorite numbers to a math test. I really, really like that analogy. You can have your go-to moves, your things that work all you want. But if you don't know what the questions are going to be, there are no assurances that your answers are going to be correct. So 
again, another warning to people who just want to show it to me. Give me the five best things to do under these conditions. There is a level of validity to that. And I don't want to discount that validity um, because that that's a great platform to begin your training, actually, right? What are the five things that work best, right? The three things that work best. You train those things out. Uh, but again, if you're hyper-focused on just those things, you aren't developing your attributes, you aren't uh, making allowances to how variables might change, how those three or five favorite things get applied, you're really just caging yourself and you're looking for an easy answer, right? There, there are right. Guillaume Williams, depends if you're fighting a sword or a stick. Absolutely, right? If this was a stick fighting match right now, I can give myself a big, huge pat on the back. I did good. I got the best of that exchange. It's a stick. I would say this is completely unacceptable if this was, you know, a machete fight, right? Um, I, I don't want to trade hits. That's the reality of it. And that's why we train with sticks, right? There's this whole conversation in FMA. A stick is a sword. A sword is a stick. Whatever. Within the, within the framework of one sparring match, I changed my mentality and my intentions so many times, you guys. You're totally allowed to do this. My opponent never knows this. But in one moment, I could be trying a technique that I haven't been able to try against um, an opponent before. The next one, I could have, you know, a self-preservation mentality where, you know, I'm going to choose not to engage unless i'm 100 percent sure that i'm gonna go to i'm gonna get a clean strike i i don't do that too often because honestly they create for really 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 boring matches and a huge part of what i love about stick fighting full contact is the audience i love having an audience around when i'm in a stick fighting match um it it number one it helps feed my ego when i do something really awesome Ooh, wow, that was awesome. But at the same time, it's got that yin and yang where I have to accept that something awesome is going to be done against me. And so that helps regulate my ego. So I love it when people watch. I love it when people film. I don't mind failing. It's not a big deal. But, I, you know, what I don't like is when, you know, dojo storming or like, prove to me that works. Um how am I going to do that? We're going to, we're going to conduct, you know, m multiple tests against a number of, <laughs> a, a, you know, with a, a big sample size, different body types, different conditions. No. So does the hanging guard bait to thrust works? It has worked for me. I think it has a pretty high probability of working, but I'm also not going to discount the fact that it's still a very risky technique. Um, gyro, this technique is similar to a technique I to a technique I learned in uh, Hema or Hema historical European martial arts. Yeah, absolutely. And when Mandala Jason Jones from the PTTA shared me this hanging guard, he did cite that this was you know a Hema technique. So, hundred percent, that's what that is. Anyway, thank you guys very much for your time. I hope you enjoy that video. Uh, I'm gonna do more of these. I mean, I I show the entirety of sparring matches, but I think people generally prefer when we deconstruct moments in time just one thing one or two things that ended up working i think it's just easier to digest easier to reply to so all right guys um if you enjoy that video if you love the filipino martial arts or even if you like it a little um i'm out here you guys um making content to help promote filipino martial arts so if you're an instructor i hope um, that that has a ripple effect that can benefit you, right? There's there are there there are enough instructors for interested students, right? So if you're an instructor in Alabama or Texas, hopefully some of the videos I've released over time benefits you. Um, so I'm very proud and happy to to help Filipino martial arts in that way. And all I ask is again, you know. Um, hit that thumbs up button, leave me a comment, subscribe. If you want to get notified, hit that notification bell. Uh, really helps the channel grow and it lets YouTube algorithm know that, hey, I'm a Filipino martial artist. I'm watching Filipino martial arts content. So YouTube is going to send that Filipino martial arts content to more Filipino martial artists 
and we grow as a community. And then when jackasses are here, when I'm at 10,000 subscribers making dumbass comments, you can be like, screw you, man. I've been here since GN only had 500 subscribers. And I'll be like, that's right, man. Gyro and Guillaume and Stefan and JTR, the Warriors Code, Adam Prado, they were here from the get-go. So screw you, newcomer. No, I'm just joking. Thank you guys very much for your support. Stefan, yes, we're going to do more of these. We're going to do more of these. Because you know why also? There are enough Filipino martial arts um, videos and tutorials. They're absolutely great. But they need to be now. We need to begin showing more of them working under pressure, working under, you know, uh, non-collaborative, non-choreographed iterations of, of I mean, there's still kind of demonstrations in a way. But yeah, and, and we're going to be OK, guys. We're going to be OK with, oh, what happened to your footwork? It doesn't look like your footwork training or what happened to that technique? It didn't look just like that because we know, right? We know that we, 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 I guess we try to aim for perfection in a vacuum and that we know those things are going to degrade under pressure. And so what that allows to happen is that you can continue to um, learn and monitor how it, how it may actually look um, in application. And then you can sort of use your closed vacuum training to make some slight modifications so that we can bridge bridge that gap and hopefully what that amounts to is more filipino martial arts full contact sparring videos being shared um, and just like jujitsu you guys the more people that have their eyes and ears and brains into the subject the more innovation we will see and i do believe innovation is possible in the filipino martial arts despite it being hundreds and hundreds of years old right the innovation is going to come specific to our condition who we are where we are where we live and what we intend to do with it. So that's a really long plea for y'all to just hit the subscribe button. <laughs> or to hit that like button. Or leave a comment. Anyway, again, thank you guys very much for your time. Until next time, my name is Paula Rubio, a.k.a. GN. Cheers. Um, and have a great weekend, you guys. Kick ass. Spar. Do Filipino martial arts. Love you guys. Thank you again.